These children are not misbehaving. They are actually being encouraged to scream and pop these balloons. They've come from a war zone, and this exercise helps them release their violent emotions. The teachers ask them what does the word violence mean. Some talk about the arguments they had with their classmates back in Syria. Others recall their memories of war. My friend wrapped his chest with fireworks to detonate himself, so he kills us. He burned himself. My brother was killed. A shell hit his house. Miss, miss, army soldiers came and raided and burned our house. Then it's time for the children to put their memories and feelings into drawings. Death and fighting dominates most of their work. Marwa wants to show me her brother's grave. Others show me tanks and dead children. Running this program is an aid group called Insan, Arabic for human. It's a Syrian non-governmental organization funded by a $25,000 grant from the Danish government. All staffers are trained by the Danish Red Cross to provide psychological support to Syrian children. Our goal is to teach them how to express those feelings uh, using uh, painting and uh, interactive theater in order to, so that they gain a sense of control over them, which helps in the coping process. Their, their growing is being uh, suppressed by many factors. 65% of those children are not going to school. Of those, 35% are forced to work in very hard circumstances. In the playground nearby, it's time to have fun, but some need extra care. Around 150 children have participated in workshops like this one. Some of them are showing signs of post-traumatic stress disorder, including severe depression, lack of sleep, and eating disorder. Their trainers say they need psychiatric help. But there aren't enough psychiatrics, hospitals, schools, or even food for the Syrian refugees. They pray for now, but the Syrian war will always be part of their lives. Omar Saleh Al Jazeera, Narlija, near the Turkey-Syria border.